Hello, friends. Since I have heard that uh, your practical exams of DNB are coming up, it is very much vital for you to understand and again, you know, kind of revise the case presentation in the practical examination. So I'm just going to talk about pertinent to spine. If ever you get a case of spine, what is the basic history that you should take and what is relevant? So what are the different cases that you may possibly get in the exam? Lumbar canal stenosis, prolapsed intervertebral disc, spondylolisthesis in lumbar spine, cervical myelopathy, myeloradiculopathy or radiculopathy in case of a cervical spine, post-traumatic myelopathy, TIVD, that is a disc in the cervical spine, OPLL, central cord syndrome, any infection or tumors in cervical spine. You may get a case of infection that is port spine. In, uh, you know, higher up in cervical spine, that is atlantoaxial spine, cervical spine, cervical thoracic spine, dorsal, dorsal lumbar and lumbar spine. A case of myelopathy in the dorsal spine, secondary to OLF, that is also by ligamentum flavum, infective neoplastic cause. Post-traumatic pathological fractures can also cause dorsal myelopathy. Kyphotic deformity, that is post-traumatic, post-tubercular congenital and post-laminectomy. Case of deformity, that is scoliosis, congenital, neuromuscular, which may be secondary to multiple causes may also be there in the exam. Even if you're not sure about the exact cause of the new, uh, type of scoliosis, at least approach it in a way of deformity so that you are able to pass in the exam. A case of kyphoscoliosis, that is kyphosis and scoliosis together, as in the case of neurofibromatosis, congenital or myelomeningocele. Spinal cord tumors, that is different types of tumors rarely may be asked to you. If they are not getting any other case, they may be just put in the tumors. Schumann's kyphosis, ankylosing spondylitis, senile kyphosis, failed back syndrome, tandem stenosis, that is the patient having a cervical spine pathology with lumbar canal stenosis. Hence, whenever you get a patient of lumbar canal stenosis, it's always vital just in a brief way, talk about balance, the check for Hoffman's in short, so that you are sure that you are not having a case of tandem stenosis. If the case is of a tandem stenosis and you miss out on the cervical spine, that is a very big blunder considered in the exam, which you shouldn't. Hence, in a case of lumbar canal stenosis or anything in the lumbar spine per se, if you see the patients of senile age group, it is important that you just go in and check for, you know, the upper motor neuron signs so that you're sure it is not a case of cervical myelopathy. So now we are just going to talk about the general case presentation. You have to first note down what are the chief complaints. Most commonly, the chief complaints are pain, be it in the back or in the leg or loss of balance. Once you have listed the chief complaints, you have to dig in the chief complaints in a detailed way. Now, starting with low backache, you have to ask for the onset, whether it is acute or gradual. The character of pain, whether it is a dull aching pain or a throbbing pain. The intensity of pain, how bad it is. VAS may not be applicable in all the cases where a patient is not very much, you know, uh, profound about accepting and understanding the concept of VAS. The periodicity, whether it is continuous, intermittent, the aggravating relieving factors that is bending forward, standing, sitting or any activities like lying down or change of postures, whether it is progressive or non-progressive. Now, why is it so? Whenever we talk about any acute pain, that may be in a case of, for example, a lumbar disc herniation, gradual pain generally is of a low line etiology or, a, you know, gradually progressive disease, like a possibly a case of tubercular spine. Dull pain generally is not incurred in cases of infections. What we incur in case of infection is a throbbing pain. Similarly, patients who are having a pyogenic cause of infection may have a very bad pain. So the vas would be very much higher as compared to other causes. Continuous and intermittent pain. Generally, the patients who are having a etiology of tumor or of infection, they tend to have a continuous type of pain. Patients who are having compression on the nerve roots or basically, for example, a prolapsed intervertebral disc. In those cases, if the patient has a discogenic cause of a back pain, that is basically the back pain is being caused by a disc. In that case, bending forward is going to be painful. Any patient who complains of pain on change of posture or while change of posture, that is, you know, taking sides on the bed or sitting and standing up. So these patients basically, in this pain basically indicates that the spine is not stable and is unstable. So you have to ask for pain while change of posture. You have to ask for pain with change of motion. That is, if ever the patient is sitting and from sitting and standing up, the patient is getting pain. That means that is a big pain because of instable spine or unstable spine. Generally, 
<coughs> sorry the pain of etiology like infection or tumors they are progressive other pain may be non progressive or not very rapidly progressive the second common complaint that the patient says in the case of spine would be a radicular pain so you have to ask for onset whether it was actual uh, acute or gradual now remember generally when we talk about a pivd the history is such that it starts off with a pain in the lower back the lower back pain settles and then the patient starts to have leg pain so that is very much classic hence the onset is important the site whether it is in the buttock the posterior thigh the lateral calf or the calf where exactly is the pain traveling because with that you will come to know the possible dermatome the character of the pain whether the pain is a shooting pain or pin prick or a lacerating type of a pain so it is very much important the intensity the periodicity aggravating and relieving factors now why is periodicity important because many a times the radicular pain that goes in the leg if ever that is aggravated in the laying down posture or lying down posture that means the patient is having a foraminal type of compression that is the compression is in the foramen be it because of a canal stenosis be it because of a disc whenever the patients are having a compression in the foramen that pain is going to get aggravated in lying down position now whenever the patient will have a relieving or uh, relief of pain whenever the patient is flexing the hips and knees that means that that is a kind of a uh, compression secondary to a pivd or a herniated disc because in that case you basically flex the spine once you flex the spine the foramen will open up and the pain will go away standing time and walking distance are important because that will indicate how severe the symptoms are and how gradually over time they have been deteriorating the next common complaint is of that of a neurogenic claudication you have to ask for the onset the site whether it is proximal to distal or distal to proximal because generally whenever we talk about the distal to proximal type of presentation it may be not a neurogenic claudication or it may be a vascular type of claudication the character whether it is dull aching or not the aggravating factors generally these patients you know have pain when they keep walking and they have to sit you know you have to ask for the relieving factors as well not just the aggravating factors so walking generally gives a pain which is relieved in the sitting posture so how much the patient is able to walk that is important so aggravation generally is by standing or walking and making a note of that duration is important walking downhill is also important because that will give you an idea what type of claudication the patient has 